What if I told you 82,000 people visit the emergency department annually due to a paracetamol overdose in the US alone? What if I told you that of these 82,000, 458 tragically lost their lives? Startling figures, right? For the last two decades, overdoses of common painkillers have been on the rise. And well, those figures are 12 years old. I think it's fair to say that we have a bit of a problem on our hands. The thing is, reducing painkiller abuse is kind of a weird endeavor. See, analgesic abuse is a mentally imposed situation caused by a lack of pharmaceutical knowledge from the patient or a mental condition. And hence, reducing painkiller abuse means setting up mental health facilities, call centers, health sanctuaries. These are all post-abuse measures. And the only pre-abuse measure we have is educating the population about pharmaceuticals. But there's one other thing we can do, and while it won't reduce the rate of pharmaceutical abuse, it will reduce the implications of this abuse. And that is reducing the side effects of these common painkillers. In particular, the two most popular ones, paracetamol, acetaminophen in the US, and ibuprofen. You may know them as uh, Panadol and Nurofen, respectively. So, Ibuprofen is known as an NSAID, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. And when a cell is damaged, arachidonic acid is released. And when this acid is, uh, reacts with the COX enzyme, it produces prostaglandin H2. This prostaglandin can go on to become many specialized prostaglandins, one of which is responsible for uh, the production of pain. So, the, what ibuprofen does is inhibit our COX enzyme. In doing so, preventing the production of all our prostaglandins and therefore stopping the production of, say, uh, pain, fever, inflammation. So, what, but the problem is, prostaglandins are also needed for other bodily processes such as maintaining the gastrointestinal lining. And when this lining is compromised, we get things like gastrointestinal bleeding, uh, stomach ulcers, the range of effects. So what's the solution? It's known as a terminal prostaglandin synthase inhibitor. And what this does is inhibit the PTGES enzyme, which is responsible for uh, converting our P prostaglandin H2 into the prostaglandin needed for pain, prostaglandin E2. In doing this, we prevent the production of pain while allowing all other prostaglandins to be produced, therefore allowing all other bodily processes to go on and reducing side effects. Paracetamol, on the other hand, is a bit weirder because it reduces pain and fever without reducing inflammation. And as a result, we don't know how it works, even after 130 years. But that's all right because even though we don't know how the drug affects bodily processes, we know how the body affects the drug, how the body metabolizes the drug. Yes, they're two different things. And as a byproduct of metabolization, we get a toxin known as NAPKI. And under normal dosage, the NAPKI can be detoxified by a naturally produced detoxifying agent called glutathione. However, in overdose, the NAPKI overwhelms the quantity of glutathione and goes on to destroy your liver cells, leading to side effects. So the uh, Solution to this is a combination drug of paracetamol and acetylcysteine. Acetylcysteine is currently administered to those who suffer from a paracetamol overdose and works by replenishing our glutathione detoxifier levels so they can keep producing, uh, detoxifying our load of NAPKI. By combining the two, obviously, we get our pain relief from the paracetamol and we can uh, defeat our NAPKI. But I think there's one other point we can get from this, and that is that reduce, um, I was 15 at writing this paper, and if I can do it, the professionals can do it right. So that's what I thought, so I searched the internet for about two months, and what I found was about pretty much the most horrifying issue of modern science, and that is that I found tons of sites and papers on how acetylcysteine is our antidote to paracetamol. However, it's just 10 to 1,000, but however, guess how many I found actually suggesting combining the two to make one safe painkiller? I found two academic papers and two websites. I mean, one of the websites was Reddit. I mean, that's like so bad I thought about patenting the idea. But 
what I'm getting at here is that we can have as much technology as we want, but in modern science, we can't find what we're not looking for, and lives depend on it. I'm Arthur and Superkuma. Have a good night.